Welcome to today's uh, webinar. We're just going to leave another 60 seconds or so for, for more attendees to roll in, and then we'll get started. For those of us who are already here, should you have any questions throughout the session, feel very free to send them through the chat. Um, we will get to as many questions as we can in the last quarter or so of the segment. All right, got a couple more rolling in now. Welcome, Ahmed. Great, so um, let's get started. And uh, of course, we'll welcome any other uh, latecomers to today's session. So today we're going to take a look at a very exciting category. In fact, we're going to deep dive uh, both global data as well as Alibaba industry data. Um, and we're going to examine some of the fastest growing product groups and, and subcategories within the space, as well as highlight some of the regional opportunities uh, globally for, for businesses in this industry. Before we get into the main sections for today, I just want to do a quick overview of what Alibaba.com does. As many of us already know, our mission is to make it easy to do business anywhere. And that would include across borders, uh, that would include um, local to local transactions as well. Uh, but most importantly, we offer a suite of tools that helps uh, that help our sellers find opportunities uh, around the world to, to enter new markets, enter new industries, and so on. We started about 25 years ago with a, with this mission in mind to help uh, make access to global supply easier for buyers around the world. Since then, we've developed uh, and deployed operations in many countries around the world, uh, both local and uh, indirectly managed. We've got 40 million active buyers in our network, which is just about one quarter of our total membership base, so about 150 million worldwide registered buyers, of which 40 million of them are actively inquiring and transacting on the platform. Uh, they are uh, sourcing from our supply base of over 200,000 merchants, largely based in East Asia, with a lot of uh, emerging markets such as the United States and Europe uh, joining the mix in the supply base as well recently. Where Alibaba.com sits within Alibaba Group is uh, a very special topic. Uh, I won't spend too much time on it today, but to summarize, really, we are Alibaba's B2B marketplace. So uh, what we mean by that is we, we do not operate D2C. Uh, we have lots of other platforms for that. For global D2C, we have AliExpress, Tmall Global. As you can see, we also have local China market, D2C, such as Taobao and Tmall, uh, as well as China market B2B, 1688. So Alibaba.com really focuses on the global B2B space uh, and plays in over 350 global industries and categories. Why we are so laser focused on B2B uh, can really be uh, summarized right here. Um, the value traded in B2B is six times that of the value traded in D2C. Another fun fact is about 20% of shipments here in the USA uh, are, um, are powered or generated through e-com uh, in the D2C space. But in B2B, it's actually about 5% less, meaning there's a lot of room for growth on the table. Further indicating uh, that, that gap in the market, um, digitization in general has been something that Western Hemisphere regions have been a little slower to adopt. Um, just about 60% of manufacturers don't have an e-commerce site. And uh, more remarkably, 
over 70% of them don't even uh, sell through their own pure play website. What that means is uh, while they are certainly earning margins, both B2B and B2C, um, they are leaving a lot of opportunity on the table uh, with the digital buyers who are mostly focused on sourcing uh, efficiently using tools like Alibaba.com. I won't spend a lot of time on this. It looks like a jumbled mess, I'm sure, to some of us, but um, this really gets at where Alibaba delivers the most value. As you can see, a global supply chain can be really complicated. I haven't even added the, the national boundaries uh, to the mix where you have to start worrying about uh, compliance, uh, uh, HTS codes, tariffs, and things like that. Um, but what I really want to mention here is that on every node of this supply chain, Alibaba.com supports a B2B business. That means maybe you're a raw material supplier or maybe you're a logistics supplier that you can join Alibaba.com to find customers around the world. Uh, when, you're, when you're looking at D2C marketplaces, what is typical of them is uh, you have far less access to your customers. Um, you're not really meant to generate those relationships. They're very transactional and quick. You're really acting as a supplier for a distributor. Um, and in, in, a, in a B2B context, you really want to keep those relationships and build on them because they're, um, they're far more valuable than a single consumer. So let's talk just briefly about the buyer base on Alibaba.com. What the buyers are trying to accomplish when they use a, a platform like Alibaba or, or digital tools to do sourcing, uh, either, either uh, one or more of the main buckets being to create a new product to simply take advantage of an arbitrage or other opportunity to move a product from one place to a new market or to operate a business. So think hotels, schools, um, shipping companies, right? Got to use a lot of pallets. So, so these, these are the, the, the typical use cases for the buyers on the platform. Um, more than half of them are very technologically savvy, typically using mobile devices to initiate most of their conversations and many of their orders. Uh, and that, again, highlights the need to have a mobile-oriented strategy or, or just to have a mobile leg as part of your uh, marketing strategy. Uh, finally, what Alibaba really seeks to accomplish uh, for our buyers is to, to help them uh, help create efficient, seamless sourcing experiences for them. And that, that comes uh, in a lot of forms. We have all kinds of promotions tools, activities, and so on to help buyers get in touch uh, with potential suppliers from around the world. If we just take a quick look at some of our top buyer regions, uh, some of us may be a little bit surprised to see the U.S. right on top here. Frankly, I'm not. Um, the, the U.S. buyer base accounts for about 12 to 13 million of that 40 million active buyer base. Uh, you will also see a trend that there are quite a lot of Commonwealth and former Commonwealth countries on this list. And that has a lot to do with the, the ease of doing business between uh, legal jurisdictions that have similar uh, similar setups, right? If, if, you, if you're in uh, the UK and you want to do business with somebody in Canada, well, um, more or less very similar legal frameworks because former Commonwealth, correct? Uh, Australian and New Zealand might be an even better uh, or more extreme example of that, where where the 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 legal codes are so similar that um, that it's just that much easier to navigate. Using platforms like Alibaba.com, however, can help um, ease the the navigation and the difficulty because you have a, a lot of different methods to to do the, your diligence to vet your your uh, potential suppliers or customers. Not to mention, we've got things like real-time uh, chat translation and AI-powered uh, messaging. So it just makes it that much more efficient for you to um, generate business with prospects overseas. So today, we are going to focus on this, this highlighted industry here at the bottom, sports and entertainment. In fact, we're going to do a, a, a more dedicated deep dive on the sports and entertainment subcategory sports equipment. Just for everyone's understanding today, Alibaba has experienced uh, triple digit growth since the onset of the recent pandemic. 
in all of these uh, top 10 categories. Uh, sports and entertainment being no exception to that. And this growth trend has actually been sustained uh, post pandemic. Uh, many of us who, who typically go to or attend or, or participate in events, uh, industry events, trade shows, things to that nature, have probably noticed that 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 the uh, uh, the, the energy there or the the attendees there is it's not quite where it was back uh, towards uh, 2018 2019. A lot of a lot of customers have actually shifted their their sourcing focus to use more marketplaces and digital tools. And now that they have those capabilities, it's just um, it's just that much more efficient to continue to leverage them. So to get to our deep dive today, now, um, again, please uh, raise your hand, send a message if you have any questions. I'm actually going to start with my sources because we've got quite a lot of charts and data coming up here uh, to give you a good sense of the opportunity selling in this space. So as you can see, um, have relied heavily on, on publicly available trade data, um, US Census, Customs, Eurostat, and so on. Uh, you'll notice this QR code at the bottom. Uh, if you scan this, you will actually also get access to a free industry report uh, on sports equipment that I generated with Alibaba.com site data. So, so the the um, the charts and tables that you're going to see uh, come from harmonized data sets from these sources. So, just to get started, when we when we take a look at the the entire global industry for sports equipment, what we see is a is a massive multi-billion uh, or over $100 billion industry. Um, uh, we also see consistent growth across most regions. So if you, if you look at the global market size uh, and forecast on the right, you see a fairly linear trend upward. And this has a lot to do with uh, evolving consumer preferences it also has a lot to do with new product types that are coming out to market that come with a price premium, but offer all kinds of added functionalities, uh, as 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 well as things like certifications for fair trade and so on. And we're going to examine some of these trends. You'll also see, um, maybe surprisingly, that Asia is uh, the leading market and is is forecasted to actually extend its its uh, um, its size um, gap. Uh, ahead of the the, the next largest uh, market here, uh, this has a lot to do with with um, developing regions, large large populations, and increased uh, um, consumer price indexes in these areas. There's another element that we're going to explore a little later on, which has to do with team sports, which is one of the main uh, driving factors of purchases in this uh, category. And finally, um, while while not everybody gets most excited about um, emerging markets, we do see that North Africa and Middle East, which traditionally have lower populations in some of these other regions, also lower uh, purchasing power in many cases, uh, are are actually growing at a pretty good clip. Uh, the The market size is upward a billion um, and uh, uh, upward a billion u s. dollars a year forecasted to continue growing. Now, on the bottom left, uh, I, I also, um, you'll remember that I referred to our top 10 buyer markets. They're a little different in the sports industry. Uh, as you can see, the U.S. is still number one with about 14% of, of the, the uh, uh, buyers in this space on, on Alibaba.com, but then followed by Mexico, um, uh, Brazil, and the U.K., so we see some of the same uh, usual suspects on this list, but it's interesting to compare with the global data. Great. If we look at the growth trend, um, which is expected to sustain, if, if not increase, over the coming three uh, plus years, um, the, the trend is really uh, quite clear. Consumers are spending a higher percent of their household income every year on um, products in these categories. You'll also notice that um, that the increased percent of household income tracks uh, over uh, it tracks proportionate to CPI increase, meaning uh, minus inflation. This is still a growing category. It's taking up more of the of household spending. And so, what does this mean for businesses in the space? Well. 
we got to examine some of the trends that are driving that increased spending. Um, to name a few, we see in the sports equipment industry that um, that uh, Europe and Asia are driving a lot of that uh, purchasing, especially in team sports. We also see things like sensors, right? We got smart just about everything these days from, from watches to heartbeat trackers, um, but, you, but there's also a growing trend of sports equipment with with built-in um, smart applications. So, and we'll look at some of these specific product groups shortly. And finally, uh, the sustainability and ecological trend is also driving a lot of innovation in the space. Uh, a lot of sports jerseys, for instance, are made out of uh, polyester or other synthetic materials. And that, that offers opportunities for businesses who are looking to minimize the carbon footprint um, use recycled materials, for instance, and things like that. One of one of our customers here in the U.S. Uh, is actually uh, making uh, sublimated sportswear, including uh, wetsuits, out of uh, recycled ocean plastics. So this this will also justify a, a, a certain premium in the space and help small businesses or businesses really of all types find their find their competitive edge. So I mentioned that we're going to look at a few uh, specific product groups. So what I've done here is I've, I've mapped out the year-on-year -year growth for product types uh, and associated that with some trends. As you can see um, in, in the space of things like uh, 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 treadmills, trackers, and other, other uh, s more smart sports equipment products, there's a sustained uh, growth of five to six percent globally, uh, and this is really driven by a growing awareness about just personal health and fitness, and and uh, consumers are 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 taking the extra steps to take care of their health. Uh, I mentioned the technological advancements that are driving other premiums in the space, and as you can see, this 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 um, industry or these categories in this industry are growing uh, upward eight to 10% year on year. Uh, a lot of that is driven by really just the price premium for putting an RFID chip or a microchip of sorts into the product. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, sports enthusiasts 10 years ago, now they're behaving a lot more like professional athletes with, with, um, with uh, tracking their calorie count, their macros, tracking um, um, their calorie expenditure, and all of their physical activities so they can make a better decision about, well, do I need another protein shake or do I need another jog? If we look at, um, at, at those sustainable materials that I mentioned, this is also a space that's growing rapidly, um, especially in terms of the, the sports wear. Uh, that said, a lot of, a lot of uh, other sports equipment can be made out of recycled materials, everything from plastic, rubber, wood, right? So think about uh, think about equipment like um, uh, balls. Think about um, what would you call it? Um, wooden inputs for for gymnastics. That's right, and and so on. These these are 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 um, more and more being um, made out of materials that have been sourced either ethically, uh, made out of recyclable materials, or made out of actual recycled components. Uh, and finally, you'll see that that the 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 bottom three uh, product groups here are all experiencing double digit growth. Uh, that's mostly a categorization um, justification because esports, technically sports, um, those the types of products sold in, under esports would typically um, be considered consumer electronics, hardware, uh, even even office furniture. Right? Um, we've we've seen a lot of um, big brands come to market in the past 10 years for things like uh, gaming chairs, um, uh, integrated headsets, uh, things like that. So if we zoom in a little bit on, on the leading subcategories in the space, um, again, these are this is external uh, data corroborated by Alibaba.com site data. We can see that team sports are clearly where the, the highest uh, volume of, of trade is happening. Um, we can see that um, if, you, if you just look at the outdoor sports gear, right? So we're, now we're talking about um, uh, cleats, jerseys, um, equipment, balls, and so on. There's a lot of overlap with, with team sports gear. 
Um, now I'd say that from the from the consumer driven new product groups that are that have come to the space, right? Think about your Apple Watches um, and and other types of of uh, fitness trackers that really are padding the uh, overall value traded in the space. If we, if, if we look at fitness equipment, that's a little bit more traditional. I think I think most of us here today have a little more experience with those traditional items like treadmills and um, uh, shoulder presses and things like that. Uh, those are also being upgraded um, as we speak uh, with smart um, smart tracking and, and so on. So look for the the value in these spaces to increase uh, probably disproportionately to the increase in household income spent on this. And that would mean that businesses who are who are using these as as um, capital products, let's say running a gym, um, they are actually driving a lot of the the adoption in these new product categories. So I also broke down the growth trend over time for these trending product groups. And what we see, which we noted a couple slides ago, is a, a major trend, rapidly gro uh, rapid growth in the esports equipment. Um, what we see, what we see there again, I mentioned, it's fueled a lot by premium products such as motherboards or or uh, uh, gaming processors and, and things like that, as well as the accessories that will typically go into a gaming setup. Right? They they don't just use a typical office mouse or even an office keyboard. Uh, so this is driving a lot of growth in the industry in a short time. Uh, if we look at a more um, sustained trend in the uh, team sports and outdoor sports gear that we mentioned, uh, we can see that um, the, the U.S. alone is uh, standing for, um, it's, a, it's about a $3 billion market. So if you're, whether you're uh, playing regionally or internationally, you can see that this is not a trend that's going away soon, um, especially since those emerging markets that I mentioned earlier are adopting a lot of the same consumer behaviors, as well as preferences for team sports and so on as, as um, some of the more established regions. So today I'm going to share with you a couple of insights about what you can do about that, right? Now you've got some good information. You've seen some, some ideas about um, product groups that they, they, they could be a, your next best seller. So now what? Um, well, on Alibaba.com, this is a very undersupplied market today. Um, what this means really is that, um, that a lot of buyers are requesting quotations, initiating orders uh, among a, 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 a fairly small set of sellers. That means that the sellers are of course, they're very happy to, to, to be getting a disproportionate amount of, of opportunities. Um, for buyers, it could be a source of frustration. But if you think for, for our next seller, what's really the opportunity? Well, if you're, if you're playing in this space, you can be very confident that, that there is um, a disproportionate amount of interest in your products compared to your, the, the competition on the platform. Uh, again, I put that QR code. Should you want to download the industry report, it's totally free. It's also totally anonymous. So, so, um, so uh, nothing to worry about there. I'm not going to give you a call if you scan it. Uh, just enjoy that. Take that as your, your, your takeaway today. So some of my favorite things about selling on Alibaba.com while we're on the topic it would be it's a single global unified marketplace. In other words, we don't cordon off different regions. Um, we don't cordon it off on a country basis like, like many other e-commerce outfits. Uh, we are also exclusively focused on B2B. Uh, that means uh, businesses that don't, don't necessarily carry their own brands or carry any brand at all can still find opportunities uh, to do their traditional business here. Uh, added benefit of that would be that on Alibaba.com, our merchants completely control their supply and inventory, everything from pricing to promotion. Uh, and, and which product photos you're you're using, right? We um, Alibaba does not uh, put any downward pressure on your pricing. Uh, it's a it's a, an open marketplace. So so if you want to if you have a, a specific pricing strategy or a specific promotion strategy, it is up to you to affect that. And finally, whatever you're doing on Alibaba.com has the potential to reach our global audience. 
So why would a why would a buyer, let's say in the Middle East, want to source uh, American sportswear, right? Well, there's there's quite a few justifications actually, and based on uh, surveys on our own buyers. We can see um, that that they have a good understanding of the the competitive or comparative advantages of supply in different regions. So typically, what you'll find when you're uh, when you're doing business with a European company, for instance, is they have access to a lot of brands. Typically, that's the source of the brand. Um, and if you're if you're looking for a specific product. The typically the, the the supplier or the manufacturer of that product is regionally based. Now, if you're looking at something, um, let's say that you're looking at Nautilus equipment uh, to to put it into your into your commercial gym operation. Well, chances are you're going to get the best rate on that equipment from a U.S. supplier, if not Nautilus themselves. So, um, if we're and also if we're talking about things like lead time, legal frameworks, and so on. Uh, our buyer base has a stated preference for North American supply. And so how does it work, right? Uh, it's actually very similar or akin to, to a sales funnel in, in any marketplace or, or any other context, really. Um, it's about generating an initial uh, impression on your products uh, or on your storefront. And then converting them, right? How do you do that? With compelling images, uh, competitive prices, perhaps a wide MOQ range, so they understand that 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 you can do, um, you can fulfill orders at different quantities. Um, and then, how do you convert those into uh, inquiries and eventual orders, right? Uh, so on the right, you'll see in Alibaba.com, you have multiple methods to affect every step in the pipeline. Uh, typically, there's a mix of things you can do organically and some paid shortcuts. And on that, uh, here you see roughly Alibaba.com's business model. You see there's, for any given search term that, that goes into our algorithm, you have a mix of results, right? On the very top, you see a brand banner. So excellent, excellent placement. They get uh, the top slot, so they will earn roughly 100% of every eyeball that searches for a product with the keyword associated with that book banner. Very powerful. You can link 15 products to it, and you will dominate that many searches at least. Premium sponsored ads is a bit scaled down version of that, where you are the top product result for a duration of, of 12 months at a time, and uh, fees for both of these vary based on popularity um, and there is a competitive aspect to this. Um, and then finally, keyword advertising will be very similar to your efforts um, to populate your own website with maybe some Google ads or, or something on Instagram. Uh, very similar, you, you simply set premiums based on uh, region, buyer behavior and so on. And you, and you compete on these uh, premiums with other suppliers uh, in the space. And then you have about 990 organic results, which is most of them. In other words, you can choose to primarily focus on organic performance and you will still have a uh, high placement is, as long as you are um, well doing good SEO, making sure your products have good scores and lots of information. Just some of the the uh, capabilities that Alibaba.com suppliers compete on. You don't need to have all of these to do well. Um, typically one, two, and you're and you're already doing well. Um, product IP or brand IP, especially relevant in Western Hemisphere regions, uh, such as the U.S. Uh, um, customization capability, of course, if you're if you're um, the original manufacturer of a product, you can charge a premium for customizing your products, of course. Um, and buyers are often looking to have a product uh, made for them that doesn't exist on the market today. Uh, quality certifications. So in, in this space, ISO would probably be most relevant. If you were in the food and beverage space, of course, FDA, um, FDA and so on. Th these, these are uh, invaluable, um, invaluable to have on any in any sales context in the B2B space. But on Alibaba.com, buyers are really looking to do diligence quickly and efficiently. 
So if you have these, um, you you would want want to uh, showcase those on your on your storefront, so the buyers can see who you are, what your capabilities are, and decide to proceed or not. And finally, simply having a competitive source for your supply can can already justify your margins in B two B, and leveraging a platform like Alibaba.com allows you to scale those to a global audience. And before we move on to the, the, the interactive element of today's uh, session, I just want to share um, uh, the steps for joining a marketplace like Alibaba.com. And specifically on Alibaba.com, I would say um, uh, the timeline here is quite reasonable. Um, many businesses will join a marketplace and need to build up some of their capabilities. So it's a, it's a great thing that Alibaba has ample staff, um, both domestic and around the world, who can help guide you through building those capabilities, uh, displaying your own capabilities, and really helping you to harmonize your business model with, um, with your eventual Alibaba.com operating model. So really what you want to do to get started is just have a chat with one of us. You could also choose to visit our uh, commercial packages page and pick one there and get started. Um, once you once you begin the onboarding, there's a few steps that you need to do um, to go live. Uh, business verification being the first one, we perform that extra step of diligence on behalf of our buyer base, uh, and then we help you set up your storefront, get your products listed, and you will work with with um, your account manager in U.S. overseas. It, it does depend on the package, so do have a look at those or or ask if you have any questions. Uh, and finally, um, once once your your initial setup is is done and you're trained to do iterative operation from time to time, uh, what you really want to do is focus on being consistent. Um, the The platform gives every supplier a star rating, largely based on their engagement with the platform. Um, if you're continually posting new products, if you're quick at responding to the inquiries that you're receiving. Then your star rating will increase and that will generate um, incremental organic traffic for you. And also buyers will see having a, um, see that you have a higher star rating and be that much more interested in doing business with you. So here's just a quick glance at our commercial packages. I've actually got a QR code here as well where you can go and check out in detail all of the commercial plans. And just one more time uh, before we jump into q and I wanted to make sure I shared um, the QR code for the industry report for you uh, so you can really see how, how large the opportunity is, where the opportunity is, um, and, and really learn something that, that uh, doesn't tend to be accessible otherwise. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for joining today and, and open up the floor to any questions that, that we may have. Right. Well, I suppose I might have may have overwhelmed you guys with one or two of those charts, but uh, do do let me know uh, should you want a copy of this presentation. Again, just a reminder, you can check out our commercial programs if you scan the QR on the right, uh, and you can uh, get a copy of that industry report um, if you scan the QR here on the left. All right. Thanks, everybody, for attending today and uh, wish you all the very best of business.